Today I am going to explain to you the Voila Jones face detection algorithm. Topics to be covered in here are the Voila Jones face detection algorithm, which has uh, subtopics as the hard features, integral image, add a boost, and cascading. Uh, before we proceed further, uh, I would like to mention that I have used some of the slides from the sources available online just to make this presentation more clear to understand. So let's get started. A face detection algorithm, a system, is designed by giving input as some faces and non-faces and training a classifier or something that identifies a face. So we train something using faces and non-faces and once the training is done, the data that we have got, we would be able to detect any faces from any image. So just to make this thing a little bit more clear to you, it is like we show some images is some images of a face to an alien who has no previous knowledge of what a human face is. We show some hundred or thousands of human faces and tell it that it is a human face. And we also show some hundreds or thousands of non-faces and tell it that this is not a face. So once that alien is trained to, trained to identify, a, identify those features, whenever we show uh, any new image later on, it will be able to classify it as a face or non-face. Exactly uh, what we are trying to do is is to train the computer to understand what a face is and what is, what a non-face is. Once the computer is trained, it will ca extract a certain features and everything will be stored in a file. All we do is we take that file. If we get any new input image, check the features from that file and apply it to the image. So if it passes through all the stages of that feature comparison, uh, you say that it is a face, else it is not a face. So this is what exactly uh, a computer does. And if you see the digital cameras and mobile cameras, they do exactly the same things to detect faces. Uh, so already a trained data is there with all the features that have been uh, trained already. And now all we do is in any system, we just have that trained data and using that data, we just try to classify the given new image as a face or non-face just by referring to the data that we have already have in the file. So I hope the basic idea behind the face detection using Euler Jones is clear to you. Uh, now, how are we going to detect the faces? How are we going to extract the features? But uh, before getting into what features are extracted and how everything is done, let me just give you a brief introduction to edge detection. Uh, the way edge detection works is, we have a pattern like this. It has uh, some low values over here and high values over here. So it's like a bright area and surrounded by two dark a regions above and below it. So I'm trying to find a single horizontal high value line in this image. So I create a kernel that is similar to what I would like to extract from the image. And it, lo in it, it looks like a horizontal line. So what will be extracted from that, from that input image will be the horizontal lines. So I apply this kernel all over the image and we get the output image like this. This image has high values only at the places when, wherever this pattern matches with the image. Now let us try to understand what hard features are. Hard features are more similar to these convolutional kernels that we just saw, which are used to detect the presence of that feature in the image. So we have over here uh, these hard features, which are generally used in Voila Jones algorithm. So so if you look at this hard feature, what does it signify is that a black region is replaced by plus one and the white region is replaced by a minus one. By that I mean it is exactly like a convolutional kernel which is of one row and two columns. Right column is plus one and the left column is minus one. So if you want to apply this mask to an image right here, uh, we just subtract we just subtract the pixel values under white region from the pixel values under the black region and the output will be a single value. So this is a feature that we are trying to find in this image. Similarly, uh, we have different kind of features like these. So consider this feature. I apply this feature to the image and this is similar to the feature but it varies in size and position. So when I apply 
uh, when I apply this on an image, what it exactly does is it sums up all the image, all the pixels values under the black rectangle because it is all plus one, plus one, plus one for black, and it sums up all the pixel values under the white rectangle, and then the sum of all white region is subtracted from the black region and the single value that we get is the output so I hope this thing is clear so now uh, what are these hard features why do we use them and uh, what they signify so let us say you have this feature and if you can see this this is similar to this feature uh, this feature lets us understand that understand the output bridge of the nose combination what I'm trying to say is uh, that uh, this feature resembles, resembles the bridge of nose where only the bridge is brighter and the surrounding is darker when compared to the bridge. So this feature will be able to extract this nose bridge from the image. This is done by applying this feature all over the image and after that I get the high values only at the pixels where this pattern matches exactly. So I get the high values only at this region. Okay. So from that I understand that uh, this pattern is is absorbed in this picture at these pixels, right? So similarly, see we see another feature, say this feature. Uh, have a look at this feature. Uh, this is used to identify the brighter region underneath the cheeks and the darker region on the eyes because the eyes are darker when compared to the chin, right? So when I apply this feature all over the image. I get high values only at the region where this feature matches with the input pattern of the image. So the dark and bright, right? This regions. So if I get the pattern, I will be able to figure out this particular feature from that image, right? So what we understand from this is that all these hard features have uh, some sort of resemblance to some facial features, to some characteristics of each faces. Right, so these hard features represent some characteristics of a face. So let's move ahead. So Voila Jones uses 24 cross 24 sub window from an image and it calculates these features all over this image. Uh, what I'm trying to say is that uh, you have this one feature of uh, two pixels. So you apply this two pixel feature over here, over here, and calculate the value, then shift it by one pixel again. And calculate the value and so on you move it across the entire image till you end up reaching the bottom corner pixel of the image right so this this two pixel feature uh, now we increase the size of this pixel size of this feature we make it two pixel white and two pixel black so now this feature is a four pixel size and we apply the same feature again all over the image by shifting it by one one pixel and we get the values again now again I make it four pixels for white four four, fix, four pixels for black and again apply it to the image similarly the same thing is done by increasing the size and width of all the features and moving it around the entire image so if you consider all the variation of size position of all these features you end up calculating about 160,000 plus features in this 24 cross 24 window. So for every 24 cross 24 window, uh, you end up calculating more than 160,000 features because each single type of feature is repeated all over the image in all scales, sizes, position. So you know everything combined, you have many com combinations. So right now, this is a problem here, right? We need to cal evaluate a huge set of features, about 160,000 features for every 24 cross 24 sub window in any new image. Uh, which And this thing looks practically very difficult or nearly impossible for real time phase detection. So what we are going to do is a basic idea is to eliminate the redundant features or the features which are not useful and select only those features which are very very useful for us so this is done by add boost add boost eliminates the all the redundant features the features that we don't need and it narrows it down to several thousands of features that are very useful now before going towards add boost 
let us uh, bring into the picture something called as integral image now every single every single time i need to sum up all the pixels in black region and then sum up all the pixels in white region right so whenever i want to calculate the sum of this area this area uh, that doesn't look very computationally efficient for us uh, when we want to calculate in real time right it becomes very lengthy so and that is for many so many features thousands of features so Euler Jones have come up with an idea uh, basically it is a trick to solve uh, this problem that is called as integral image the basic idea behind integral image is that uh, say we want to calculate area of this patch okay so we do not need to sum up all the pixels rather we use the corner values of this patch and do a simple calculation that I'm going to explain in the coming section so there is a simple calculation involved here by taking the corner pixel values so let us see how it is done so I'll explain what integral image is integral image this is the given input image so how do we calculate this value at the integral image so say we need to calculate the value at this pixel uh, just sum up everything from top to the left so I sum up all the pixel values here and I get 6 for this I sum up top and left side pixels and I get 2 say for this pixel I sum up all the top pixels and left side pixels to get 6 got it so integral image means to get the new pixel value just sum up all the pixel values falling in the left and top region right so let us see what is the advantage of converting any given input image uh, to this format of integral image so right now we have uh, an integral image so if you want to calculate the value of this patch in the integral image this is uh, resembling to the previous example that I have shown to you this one okay so what do you have to do is you just have to refer to your integral image go to the corresponding patch on it uh, add the pixel values of here and here that is uh, 1 and 4 and then subtract it from the sum of pixel values of the other diagonal that is 2 and 3 so just to make it more clear you want to sum up all the pixel of this patch this now we have seen the integral image you have already summed up all the values to the top and to the left to obtain this value right this value is the sum of a plus b plus c plus d region and the one is the sum of all the pixels in this region i.e. the area of one now two 2 is the sum of all the pixels in this region that is A and B region 3 is the sum of all pixels in this region that is A and C so here A and C is for 3 and A and B is for 2 so if you just take the sum of its diagonal and subtract it from the sum of its of this diagonal pixels in the integral image uh, you end up calculating the sum of all pixels in this region so moving further uh, as I have told you that Adaboost is used to eliminate the redundant features so what Adaboost actually does is uh, let's say we have all the combinations of all the positions all sizes etc taken that is uh, you have all the 160,000 features but are all of them relevant no definitely no because uh, if you see this kind of feature bridge of nose feature as I have told you earlier this will be able to identify the bridge of the nose when this feature is applied uh, right here in the in this position and it will yield highest values at this position on the image right so basically this would be a very relevant feature to extract the bridge of a nose feature in the face image uh, whereas this feature it would not give any relevant information because more or less the region over here at the upper lip is constant so you do not get any relevant data in this feature so you can say that this is irrelevant feature and you can eliminate it so that uh, it would not be considered for the further evaluation so in this way uh, we are just trying to understand that which one is relevant and which one is irrelevant features among all these 160,000 features so a very important point here is that this relevance and irrelevance is determined by ADA boost and it will select only few features which are relevant to us so what Adaboost does 
is it will identify certain number of features from all the 160,000 features and it and after uh, after after identifying all these features uh, it will it will give weight to these features and a linear combination of all these features is used to decide whether it is a face or not uh, now i'm going to introduce you another term that is weak classifier when i say a weak classifier i mean to say uh, a good feature or a relevant feature a weak classifier is something which uh, which at least performs better than random guessing what i mean to say is that uh, if i give 100 faces to it it will at least be able to detect more than 50 faces and say that these are faces so weak classifier is just a relevant feature that is ex extracted by adaboost and we apply that relevant feature and find corresponding weight of that and we continually combine all those relevant features with their corresponding weights and form a strong classifier or a strong detector. Now what is the output of this weak classifier? The output of a weak classifier is either 1 or 0. 1 is when it has performed well and identified the feature when it is applied on that image. Let us say this is a bridge of the nose feature. When this feature is applied uh, and if this feature is detected, you say that this classifier has passed and it outputs a 1. Uh, if it gives a 0 output, it means that there is no identity of this classifier. That means this pattern is not present in the input image. Uh, similarly, all these classifiers output a binary value, either 1 or 0. Hence, the combina combination of all the weak, weak classifiers together form a strong classifier. Generally, 2500 features are used to form a strong classifier. So now, we move towards our final section that is cascading. So in every 24 cross 24 window, you need to evaluate 2500 features that we obtain after performing Adaboost. If you have an input image of say 640 cross 480 resolution, uh, you need to uh, you need to move this 24 cross 24 window all through the image and in each single 24 cross 24 window you need to evaluate 2500 features and take a linear combination of all those 2500 outputs and see whether it is it exceeds a certain threshold or not and then decide whether it is a face or not this is the whole process uh, but we want to use the setup of same hierarchy in detecting whether it is a face or not that means, instead of calculating these 2500 features all the time on every single 24 cross 24 window, what we do is, we use cascades. Uh, that is, out of 2500 features, first 10 features are kept in one classifier. Means, uh, we make a set of 10, class, 10 features in, as a one classifier. Then the next 20 features or the 30 features are kept in another classifier. And next 100 or 200 features in another classifier. And so on. So we increase the complexity and what is the advantage of this thing is that when we apply this cascade on a certain window of 24 cross 24 size on any given image, we can check if it is a face or not based on the just the output from the first stage. Uh, what we have done here is uh, these 2500 features are arranged in a cascading structure. So right now what I can do is I can reject any, in any input image in very less time. You see what I'm trying to say is Let's say I have an ima input image and I get a 24 cross 24 window. So instead of evaluating all those 2500 features, what uh, what I do is I split it up into several stages. Uh, let me repeat. Uh, what I do is I split it into several stages. Stage 1, stage 2, stage 3 and so on. So I have 10 features in stage 1, 10 features in stage 2, 10 features in stage 3 and so on. Up to 2500 features. So what I see here is that uh, I will put a hierarchy on, on the classifiers and see if it passes the first hierarchical stage and proceed towards the next stage of hierarchy. By that I mean if input is given, if it passes the first stage then it may be a face. And we need to evaluate it further to confirm whether it is a face or not and this will be done by the second stage. Uh, but if it does not pass the first stage, it is definitely not a face so it is eliminated. So, in real time, when we try to detect faces in any image, this gives a lot of advantage to reject the areas uh, or the windows or the other non-faces items 
uh, that does not have faces immediately. So to summarize, we have faces, we have non-faces, and then you train a cascade of classifiers with addaboos. So now you have uh, stages that are cascaded, and each and in each stage, the classifiers are selected using addaboost. So each classifier that is selected has a threshold, it has a weight, and it has everything determined by addaboost. So after everything is done, after cascading, everything is done. You apply that each window of 24 cross 24, and it passes through all over the image. And in this way, uh, a face is detected in an image.